Hello. And I should go back. I heard a hello. Can you hear this one? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Please keep muted. We're having a little trouble with the sound on the introduction today. Thanks and welcome. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Boulder and to our special water communion service as we celebrate the beginning of this unique church year. My name is Lene Pettengill and I will be the worship leader for today's service. We welcome all at UUCB. If you are a new visitor, please email our Congregational Life Director, Beth Elliott, and let us know you found us. You'll find her email in the Zoom chat. Our church website has a great deal of information about the church and activities, and feel free to check out our new Touchpoint blog on the website. Since we are not meeting in person, please prepare for today's service and ceremony by having a cup of water or other drink nearby for the meditation. During the water communion, be prepared to post into the chat your name, where your water is, from and a word or two about its significance. Now please mute your microphones and join us for worship. Good morning, everyone. I invite you to join with us in our special in-gathering ritual in which we will gather energy and love from all the directions. You may want to stand for this ritual and even go outside if you feel like it. Your responsive call is the gathered here chant. It goes like this. Gathered here in the mystery of the all. Please rise and body your spirit and face the east. We call out to the powers of the East, representing air and the radiance of dawn. I invite you to think of places to the East of us where you have lived or visited. And I invite you to lift to your mind friends and family who live East of here and call on those memories and times with them and their spirits of life and love to be here with us today. And now, I invite you to face the South as we call on the powers of fire that the South represents. Think of places to the South of us where you have lived or visited. And I invite you to lift to your mind friends and family who live South of here and call on those memories of times with them and their spirit of life and love to be with us here today. I now invite you to face the West. We call out to the powers of the West, the power of water. Bring to mind places to the West you have visited. Lift to your mind friends and family who live West of here, the memories of time with them. Invite their spirits of life and love to be here with us today. And now I invite you to face the North as we call out to the powers of the North, <clears throat> the powers of the mighty earth, the power of stone and mountain, 
I encourage you to think of places north of here where you have lived or have visited. Bring to mind friends and family who live north of here and call on those memories of times with them and invite their spirits of life and love to be with us here today. Here in the mystery of the hour. And last, I invite you to turn to the center, home of the spirit. In this special place, I invite you to lift to your mind friends and family members who have died, leaving us with gracious memories and, of course, their love. Call on those memories of times with them and invite their spirits of life and love to be here with us today. Please join us now together in singing the full song of Gathered Here. Words will be on your screen. If you have a personal chalice or candle nearby, get ready to light it as we hear our chalice lighter speak. We invite you to tap into the chat box where your chalice is lit, the street or neighborhood, or what city if you're joining us from outside Boulder County. And now it is my honor to introduce today's chalice lighter, Janet Evans. Good morning, I'm Janet Evans. Hey, are you like me? Do you look forward to our Sunday morning worship services? It's like a lifeline for me during COVID-19, during the election year, during the wildfires, during, during. It's always something. And I need UUCB as my anchor. I'm so grateful for the devoted and loving staff here at UUCB. And how about our congregation? Do you smile inside when you look at all our beautiful faces on Sunday morning? each tiny square framing us? Is this not a beloved community? Is this not what we seek, what we need? Now it's time for our water ceremony. Oh, it's a fond ritual and it's a gentle nudge about autumn. And so a reminder of the inexorable passage of time. Time flows like water. Where did summer go? We all ask ourselves. Will this pandemic never cease? I think about UU churches around the world embarking on their own water communions. I think about how these churches are struggling in so many ways, how membership is struggling, as all of us are struggling. And while we can't physically do so, we can metaphorically lift each other up during this time. We can help each other navigate these troubled waters. And if we could, I know we would hold each other's hands as well. My husband Bob and I have been a part of the UU Church of Boulder off and on since the 80s. Some of you we've known for decades and others of you are simply new friends we have yet to meet. So my UUCB friends, let's jump into the water together and get swept along these time passages. May we greet each other once again on the other side of the river called COVID. And if you hold my hand, 
albeit virtually, I'm pretty sure we can face the coming months with dignity and grace. May it be so. I light this chalice in your honor with gratitude. Thank you for being here. May the many chalice lights now shining across our community inspire us with the knowledge that even in our individual homes and locations, we are together with others in our shared hopes and faith. We now invite all those gathered in your various locations to join together in fellowship and community as we all say aloud our congregation's covenant. We gather in fellowship, fellowship to speak truth to, to each other, to reach out and to touch another, to care with each other, to seek the truth divine. The river is a saint, the river knows no end, and the river feels no age. The river is a leader every single day. It's living in the moment, and the glory slides away. Water in you, my body. Water in you, my soul. When I go down, down to the water, boy, water, I feel whole. The river calls me over. It's calling out my name in the day and in the night. I hear that river. So beautiful, Deborah, thank you. And I now invite you to settle into this water meditation. 
let us focus on the sound of the bell and let it carry you inward as you begin to focus on your cup of water. Imagine yourself to be water, rising into the air as you evaporate into steam. And the higher you rise, the cooler you feel. You naturally collect and grow. And a loud flash of lightning and thunder shakes you loose as you become a drop of rain falling to the earth soaking into the dry earth. Can you hear the plants sighing with relief, joy, and gratitude? Water is life. You bring life as you collect into a rivulet. Now you are a stream. Joining with other streams, you become a rushing river, a joining with a vast river. You find yourself back in the place where life began 4.5 billion years ago in the ocean. As we look at our cup of water, See it for what it is. This water is both ancient as the earth and as new as the rain. It is the drop and the entire ocean, for they are one and the same. Through water, we are connected to all of life, back to its very beginning. Remember who you are in this vast and beautiful story. And remember this vital source of life you hold in your hands and give thanks always. Now drink it in this cup of life. And in this deep connection with all of life, let us tune in for a moment to our own joys and sorrows and concerns. What's on your mind and heart today? In your own quiet thoughts, lift up all that weighs on you, grief, worry, pain, Whatever it is, let us hold each other in silence. Now, let us turn our minds and hearts to those we love, holding them with love, acknowledging their pain challenges and suffering. Again, let's pause for silence. And today in our container of love, I lift up Reverend Kelly Dignan, our former minister and her family as they grieve the loss of Kelly's mother, Diana Groves. And may we also send our love, our heartfelt love and blessings and care to our director of congregational life, Beth Elliott, 
whose stepfather suddenly died from a stroke a few days ago. May we hold the, all people who are suffering from the impact of the pandemic, those suffering deep emotional turmoil, depression, anxiety, loneliness. And may we send our best loving thoughts to the quenching of the fires and to all those who are fighting those fires. I invite you now to share your concerns in the chat box and I will do my best to summarize a few of them and read them aloud. Please share freely now. Rebecca and Kathy share their blessings for college starting the semester and for our RV tour of Colorado recently. Concerns for the, for the fires, yes. And sending healing love to George and Mary. Thank you. Blessing on Alex, Alyssa, and Riker in their move from Kodiak to Anchorage. Praying for rain. Deep concern for our member, Brent George Brandon. Blessing to our firefighters. Grateful for our 50 years together. Blessing and concern for Elliot, who is now in college in Cleveland. Blessing, thank you, UUCB staff. Thank you for that. Sophie Hughes starting her fall semester of classes this week and Lindsay starting her senior year online. Blessing to have another water communion. May the waters find its way to the wildfires. May it be so. And blessings to all of our children, including River and Talon and all of the ways that they are starting school, may it be successful and go well. Feel free to continue to post. And I invite us now to consider, uh, actually let's offer our love and light to all who are suffering. And let's bring to mind all the things that you are grateful for and that bring you joy especially in this challenging time. We're glad you are here, Peter, welcome. More concerns about fire and air quality, indeed. Blessings to Marcia and her family and blessings to Jeff, my son and his family all in San Francisco. I'm grateful for this community, especially now. Thank you. Feel free to continue to post. And for all these blessings and concerns, we hold this compassionate space with love. Thank you for all of the ways that you bless each other. And now, my friends, let's have some fun. As we celebrate water and our sacred relationship with it, I invite you to join with me in creating the sounds of water in many of its various states. We are about to invite you to unmute. We are going to create sound effects together with each slide that we see. This is the Zoom version of creating the sounds of a rainstorm together. Please do not talk in the middle of this that will just create a, an interruption. And also remember, there's only so much sound space for everyone's sounds. So leave plenty of space for other people to make their sounds as well. Listen now for the sounds of water and nature. You may choose to rub your palms together, tap your fingers, snap your fingers, clap your hands, slap your thighs, stomp your feet, whatever 
fits in the moment. So now my friends, I hope you are unmuted. Here we go. We begin with the sound of clouds. How do clouds sound? They sound like the wind. Clouds rushing by. And now let's move to the next slide. What is the sound of light rain? What is the sound of just a little bit of rain? Light rain. We could use some rain around here. Now let's make it heavier. No, heavy rain. Strong. It's raining hard now. Bring on the thunder and the lightning with the rain. Bring it on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And what does it sound like to be in a snowstorm? Did you all forget it's been so long? Snow is around the corner. What do that slushy road sound like? And now the water is rushing in the creeks. All that water has gathered. Are there any birds out there? Any birds, maybe? Other nature sounds? And now the water is turning into a powerful waterfall. <laughs> And finally, we end in the ocean. How does it sound to be in the ocean? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating together. That was a lot of fun. Okay, my unmuted. All right. When I was a kid, we lived out in the country. And in the winter, I loved to take my ice skates to the pond across the road. And it was often rough and the snow, uh, from snow being on top of the, the frozen ice. But somehow I always managed to have some fun, skating alone in the beauty of nature all around. I'm going to ask if everyone would please make sure you're muted. I would appreciate it. Thank you. There's this moment that happens being out in nature where one ceases to be an outside observer and instead becomes a participant. And it is in those moments we begin to remember who we are in relation to the world and all of life. I remember creating a ritual out on that pond to help the sun go down and the moon come up. Now, my little 12-year-old self probably didn't re probably realized that they didn't need my help, but I think that it was that I wanted to participate in it. I wanted to include myself in that process. It gave me a relationship with the mystery of the cosmos. This was my form of worship, dancing with the everyday miracle and motion of life. 
and nature giving my love and gratitude back to the cosmos through this ritual of participation and appreciation. This impulse was mostly taught out of me by our culture, and it is the loss of this most sacred foundational relationship that has cut all of us off from ourselves, of knowing who we are and our place in life that has set us on this tragic and devastating journey of harm, each of harming each other and the planet. I share with you, with you a quote by Tokopa Turner from her book, Belonging, Remembering Ourselves Home. As we apprentice ourselves to the way of nature we begin to understand that all of life is in a continuous cycle of giving and receiving. It is the honoring of this cycle that makes us feel at home in ourselves and in relation to the rest of nature. In order to experience true belonging, we must not only give, we must not only acknowledge the gifts that we are receiving, but also give our beauty away. We must not only acknowledge the gifts we are receiving, but also give our beauty away, no matter how it may be received by others. We have been exiled from this experience of true belonging. Our souls, our spirits have been impoverished with the assumption that destruction of human bodies and lives and the environment are acceptable collateral damage in the name of progress. Indigenous people around the world have always known and understood that sacred relationship with the earth and all of life, which is they call sacred reciprocity. This is the foundational principle to life and to living a good life. The foundational principle. It is the golden rule with all of life. We are freely given life and we reciprocate with the honor, with honoring this gift and tending to it in every way that we can with gratitude. White colonialism manifest destiny, white supremacy culture. That is the anomaly that has led white people to being out of covenant with the earth, with each other, and with black indigenous people of color, causing deep generational wounding. And I get it, many of us white people really don't see it but black indigenous people of color know it all too well. I'm hearing in my head's comment, <clears throat> my head's, <laughs> I'm hearing in my head comments such as, yes, Dana, racism is terrible and must be stopped. That's true, but that's not us. We are the good guys. We did our work. We have this whole anti-racism thing down. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Can we just move on already? Now, I find this tempting because this thinking lets me off the hook to continue the hard and challenging work. But I have to ask, if that's really true, if we have truly been committed to doing our work with anti-racism, then why on earth would we be reluctant to show up and learn more when our black indigenous people of color, brothers and sisters tell us they need us to learn more and do better. Yes, we are out of covenant, even if we don't see it. And we are being asked to come back into covenant by the people we profess to love. I'm ready, and I hope you are too. I'm ready to set my ego aside 
the best that I can, along with all my frail worries of having my feelings hurt by uncovering deep ingrained tendencies of racism, which my friends, we all have. If it is for you, my beloved black indigenous people of color friends, you who have suffered and continue to suffer beyond my comprehension, why would I hesitate even for a nanosecond? I ask you, what would a committed, sacred covenant that creates a beautiful, holy relationship with all people of color be like? Think of it. How would that transform our world? I want to know. How would that transform our world? I want to see it. I want to live it. Bring it on, my friends. I want to learn. I want to do whatever I need to do for that vision to come true. We have believed the lies that we have been taught. And yet the truth has been waiting right in front of us all along. These truths have always been self-evident. That all humans are worthy and deserve to be treated equally with respect and love. We must accept our responsibility now to heal the broken relationships and work to care and protect all of life. These next many months are not going to be easy and they are going to continue to challenge us and shake us to our very core. I think we can all know that's coming. But don't give up. And don't suffer alone. If you are struggling and having a difficult time, reach out. Reach out to me and to other staff members and members of our community or whoever you can because we need one another. We need to each, we need each other to talk to and to cry with, to get angry with, to listen to, to distract each other and to laugh with, even if it has to be on Zoom. You see, these two are the sacred relationships of life. It is in the giving and the receiving that the bonds of friendship give our life meaning and purpose. You and I are more resilient than we think we are. And it will be difficult and it may be painful, but together we can survive this and make the most of it. And it helps by recreating our sacred relationship with life that will ground us and guide us and nourish us. So stop for a moment, my friends, and pause. Let the water run over you and cleanse you back into this present moment. The only way we can do the work and take care of each other and get through this is by remembering who we are. And the answer to this is as vast and wide as the interconnected waters that run through our veins. Every day, throughout the day, Find your own way of honoring your sacred relationship with life. If you wake up this ancient understanding within yourself 
this worldview based on humble respect, new realizations with a deepening sense of belonging and peace will arise. Don't worry. I'm not asking you to believe in God in case you were wondering. Science proves the spectacular miracles of life in every moment that make worthy this relationship that is sacred with the earth and with all of life. So my friends, as we work to dismantle white supremacy culture and all of its destructive ways, we need to have something to replace it. And the answer is right in front of us. Let us begin singing new songs and telling new stories of honoring life, honoring our places in the cycle of life and the gifts we are given every moment of every day. It is a story of generous spirits like you giving love and respect back by tending to each other and healing the world. I end with these words by Shawnee Ryder, a writer from the Shawnee tribe, I should say, Stephen Newcomb, from his book, Pagans in the Promised Land. We invite you to walk with us on our sacred path in honor of the first principle of original nations. Respect the earth as our mother and have a sacred regard for all living things. End the domination. All our relations. Wanishi. So come, my friends. Let us begin. And let us begin by honoring water. So what is your sacred relationship with water? UUCB has a long and diverse history with the waters in this water vessel that you see on this beautiful slide and right up here. This vessel was brought to UUCB from Prague. It was Czechoslovakia at that time by Fred Cole and Barb Richards and it holds molecules of 40 years of water gathered from this ritual. See that water in there? Molecules of 40 years of water that's been gathered, brought from all over the world. This has been done at the church every year for all that time. The saved and cleaned water is used for our child dedications, and it is used each year to start this ritual and ceremony. So as I go up to our chalice, I mean, up to our water, I will pour 40 years of history into our bowl for today. Let us give thanks for our Unitarian Universalist ancestors and all those who have shared their waters in this ceremony. This ritual has helped to build the sacred relationship we have with each other and the people who have helped to build this community and spread Unitarian Universalism into the world. Last weekend, 
we had around 30 people participate in the outdoor ceremony of water communion, which we recorded. And this recording will kick off our ceremony. So please note that the audio isn't that great. So we have also added subtitles. We asked everyone to leave their masks on. My mask is from Ingrid, by the way. She has beautiful masks that you can buy. <clears throat> so everyone has their mask on and it's kind of hard to hear. So to kick off our water communion ceremony, I share with you this ritual that we recorded. Hi, we're Hilton and Jenny Fitzpeaster, and this comes from Janita Creek on the Glenella Pass Road, where we spent three days getting away from it all camping. Yep, family. Awesome. Hello, I'm Becky Martin, and this is Fox Martin. And this water is the water we have been using to to water our garden each day. We have planted flowers for the bees and the butterflies and a raspberry garden that provided five amazing pies. I want to start. Go. I'm Mary Friedrich and this is water from the ponds and stream behind my house and it goes through the whole neighborhood and we're all connected. Hi, I'm Laurel Sepulchre. I have water from Paris, France, a mosque that I visited, which to me represents beauty, and other water from the Gulf of Mexico, and that represents adventure. Uh, my name is Gary Hines, and the uh, body of water that has the most significance for me. Um, is in a uh, small town in Idaho. It's in a mountain lake um, in McCall, Idaho. It's called the Payette Lake. And um, the significance is uh, the, the woman whom I was married to, who, um, we were together for almost 20 years. Her ashes are now in the lake because um, it was a place that we used to go um, to summer vacation. The Sears had a uh, cabin. We were divorced for the last few years, um, but we've remained extremely close. And um, I participated in the scattering of our ashes from the river. So, I did not have a lake. Um, it's very beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. I'm a director, I don't think director. Janet Ann. Bob Evans. 30th wedding anniversary. And we were in the Galapagos. Bucket list. Nice. Hi, we're Seth and Terry and Lily Hingat. And this water comes from our house. Uh, it helped us grow our first ever uh, family garden. You want to do this? Please, ready? Ready? This is for our friends and family, one in Houston and, and one in San Diego. I'm Tom Deloney. I'm Nicole Deloney, and this water, symbolically, is from the Pacific Ocean. And I've lived a lot of my life near the Pacific Ocean, although I was born closer to the Atlantic Ocean. But I feel as if my soul is more connected with the Pacific and the rest of being and living with it. 
So I want to contribute this. Stop. Right here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. New Pacific Ocean. <laughs> okay. Great. Done. Paul and Satan did. Headlines by David and Lisa Hughes. And I'm going to be using this symbolic battery to symbolize water from the map. There are mountain high winds and traveling the water. Hi, I'm Sharon Blue, long-time member of UUCB, and this is a lot unusual way to see me, but I'm going to pour water upon this tree, this cucumber, actually we go cucumbers, because it takes water, low nutrition, water and soil and sun and sugar. We've got all those things. I am Derby Drop. I'm Marlon Drop, and this is Water from Gilbert, California. Hi, I'm Caitlin Moore. I'm Will Drop, and uh, this water is from Gilbert Lake. I've been fishing with the water in the past 70 days. Hi, Hello, this is Kathy Edwards and Rebecca Cornelius. And we're sisters, and we just went on an RV vacation um, in Colorado. And this water, we can pour some water in. This water is from um, the White River outside Carbondale, where we stayed. It was great to get out and about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my name is Wendy Kerr, and this water is from Sunk Creek, which runs through my backyard, and um, it just really represents connection for me. I sit by it, like, every morning to meditate, and the, the water itself reminds me of my childhood home in Hawaii, and the kind of my future home of my soul, and those of my loved ones that are with me anymore, um, the light that's reflected from it that just glimmers all over the trees helps me to feel connected to the divine and my infinite self. And then just like that gurgling sound of the endless flow of it, just makes me feel more connected to like my friends and family and my new community that especially in these last few months I haven't hardly gotten to see in person. So I'm so grateful to have that in my life, and I want to share it with the rest of you. Great. Hey, uh, hi, I'm Mike Warren Greenwich. I took the water from the Steamboat Springs where I lived earlier this year, and keep it to the church. I am Martin McGowan, and I used to live from the world to the right here in the future. This is the one of the methods in the whole space for a year to stay. I'm Alan Davis, and I'm bringing water for the Clear Creek, uh, where it crosses Wadsworth Boulevard, and that's where I grew up and lived when I was little and used to play along that creek a lot, and I've been revisiting it with my brother recently. Hey. Hey. So I'm just cold, and specifically the normal year, this could be water from the Providence River in Rhode Island, because that's where we would have been at the general assembly. And that's what we need to do. So it's very simple. That's really loud. I'm glad we did. My water is from my gym, which opened up on the 1st of July, and I made it last week. We'd like to be back here. Bye bye.
Okay. <clears throat> Wonderful to see everyone. And now it's our turn for all of you who did not participate in the uh, previous ceremony. Take time now to think of water that you experience in your life and what it means to you. Please post this, post this in the chat box. Um, Please post where your water is from and a word or two about why it is important to you. We do need to keep it brief, so just a word or two, please. Um, and please take turns writing in the chat so it's not completely inundated in just a, uh, a second. <laughs> Janet Evans will read each one as I pour in water, symbolizing you and all the ways you ble your blessings flow through this community. <clears throat> okay, Janet, I'm ready. I'm working on it. Here we go. Okay. okay. From Ann Remley, water in Spruce Pool is heaven. From Lene Pettengill, water from the St. Vrain, where I love to go tubing. From Martha Batista Biddle, Candace and I have been drinking filtered water from our recent backpacking trip to Diamond Lake in Netherland. From Heidi Todd, our well. From Bonnie Chrissy, water is life. From Michael King, Water from the South Pole in a vile, memorable trip to the ice continent. From Charmin Dartscar, tap water. I drink it and would die without it. From Amy and Ed Self, swimming is the only way I can exercise since I have plantar fasciitis. From Whitney Wheelis, Wolf Creek near Pagosa. 75 years of memories. From Amanda Williams, Spirit Lake, Idaho, in honor of my late uncle who lived there. From Nicole de Lormier, concerned for my daughter Michelle, living in LA, where the, where, where the air quality is currently the worst in the world. Lisa, water from North Carolina, from private land, for, for, for performing rituals and sacred ceremonies. Diane Ewing, Virtual Water, Lake Washington, a family reunion now on Zoom. From Eric Patterson, water from a preserved wetland. From Carol Teal, from the Flathead River in Montana, I recently visited. It restored my soul. From Sarah, Water for my vegetable garden for growth. From Kate Weinstein, water from South Boulder Creek. From Jefferson Westwood, from my kitchen tap in Fredonia, New York, which will act actually fall over Niagara Falls. From Dorothy Chiarlo, water from my tap to water the flowers. It cheers me. From Peter from Peter I'm sorry for the pronunciation. From Peter R. Walden Pond, in which a dear friend is swimming daily. From Janelle Freeston, water from the Saint Rain in, in Lyons that we'd love to dip our feet into. I have just a few left, Reverend Dana. I just want to say if I've missed anyone, please enter your brief information in the chat box again. Okay, let's see. From Monica, from Monica Juniper, I brought water from the St. Brain River near my house. Symbolizes home, resilience, change, refuge. From Peter Knudsen, my water is from King Supers. Diet tonic water, effervescent and a touch of salt. From Allison Churnside, water from my vegetable garden. And the last one I see from Tom and Karina, Water from, rib, water from Rim Lake in the Flat Tops. 
examples. J this just in, Reverend Dana. Water from our home in Longmont from Sa Samantha Alvarez. It sustains us and it's fun for AV to play in. Did I get everybody? Get everybody? I'll pour some more water in just from our church for our whole community. We have come together in this way, joining our waters and ourselves. As we pour water into this vessel, it symbolizes our strong community coming together in a powerful wave to bring change and renewal into the world. I invite you now to join with me as we bless this water. This water is made sacred by the many hands that have poured it with intention and love. The many stories that each drop contains, the many lives surrounding it in this unique moment, connected by commitment and faith. Please join with me in saying, this water is sacred. May it continue to flow through this community with shining reflection of the unique gifts that flow through each of its members. This water, this water is, is sacred. sacred. May it continue to nurture this community with sustained hope that we journey together through ripples of growth and change. This, this water, water is, is sacred. sacred. May it continue to bless this community with loving reminders of our collective responsibility to one another and to the world. This water, this water is sacred. sacred. May its ripples be a reminder that the changes and growth within this community bring movement and transformation to the world beyond our doors. This, this water, water is, is sacred. sacred. May its purity offer grace to our community and the willingness to mm. forgive ourselves and one another when we make mistakes. This water, this water is sacred. In moments when we are confused or uncertain, may it bring us clarity of purpose and commitment. This water, this water is sacred. In moments when the reservoirs of our hearts and spirits are drained by sorrow or pain, May it nourish them with the knowledge that we are surrounded by a deep and abundant love. This, this water, water is sacred. sacred. Thank you. With that, I share with you a beautiful video that we have permission mm. from, um, to share called Grateful.
You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love. You're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun. You're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend till the end. You're my dreams, you're my father, you're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround. I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds. You're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow. You're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything is a Everything will feel gorgeous. Sitting pray cause what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I get back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan oh, There's a million things that I can be grateful for The small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything is a gift. When you make a donation to EUCB, you are practicing generosity and supporting the work we do together to create love, justice, and peace in the world. During the month of August, all the proceeds from our offering will be used to support our staff and further the ministries and programs of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Boulder. Your generosity is vital in helping us provide pastoral care, programming, and connection during these uncertain times. You can make a donation via Breeze using the link posted in our chat or by sending a check to UUCB. And now here's some music from Amanda Williams while we are making our offering.
Thank you for your gifts of support for our beloved community. Unitarian Universalists have known for many decades the importance of the interconnected web of life of which we all are part. This is our time to restore our sacred contract, our sacred relationship with each other as we, through Zoom, hold hands sharing our love, sharing our connection, and sharing our care as a community, coming together with love. You are not alone. You are held in this community. Oh, may all beings be well and happy. May all beings be free from strife. May all beings return to love. Peace be with you forever. Blessings to each and every one of you, my friends. Love always.
We invite you to stay with us in our Zoom rooms for a time of online fellowship and discussion. Barb and Fred are now going to tell us how this is going to work. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Fred Cole. I'm Barb Richards. And normally we would be at that front table saying, greeting you warmly, but here we are today. Shortly you'll be sorted into uh, some smaller rooms for a little bit of one-on-one -on -one conversation. So when you 